According to the will of God, where light shines upon your life, and your life will never remain the same again. Again, again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We worship you. God be praised. God be praised. Hallelujah. God be praised. Will he is King Jesus. He is beyond a king. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is a king. That is beyond king. He create kings, he made kings. He has made you that king of that vessel. He is a king in your home, the king of kings and the lord of lords. You know, he's that king that has authority over every power of darkness. And I pray that light will shine in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I told you in the previous uh, um the previous uh, uh, program that we did in 2022, I did mention that I'm gonna be inviting uh someone to be a blessing to us this person is not just someone she is a woman of god she is a vessel of god she is a woman that is a child of god she is married to pastor dotun fagade blessed with two biological children and she have spiritual children as well god be praised and she loved working with young people she, and, and i've seen that in 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 her life because i've been blessed to be on the ministry that she is she serves praise the lord and she is a lawyer as well. She's a teacher of the word by the help of the Holy Spirit. And she is a writer. And I believe she's going to bless you today. She's going to bless you mightily with the love of God and by the move of the Holy Spirit. Please call your friends. Call your friends. Call your brother. Call your sister. Call your father. Call your mother. Call anyone close to you for them to hear this word of God and word of wisdom. That will enrich your life, that will heal your soul, that will give you strength to walk in 2023. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy New Year, viewers at home. And those who will be watching later on, I'm grateful to God for my life and for your life that God has been so good and gracious unto every one of us. Seeing a brand new year is not anything that we could have you know, done by ourselves. It's just the grace of God. So I congratulate you and I congratulate myself that we all skate to 2022. And here we are in 2023. I hope you've written down your vision for 2023. I hope you have uh, a vision you want to run with. It is very, very important. Many times people write down things that they want to see at the end of the year. What is crucial is who is backing you up, who is leading you. So it's a privilege that my brother, Brother Blessing, uh, the one that is so blessed that he's got blessing, has given me the privilege to be here tonight. So I say thank you. Any altar where we can share the word of God and encourage people is a great altar. So I appreciate this time. And I say God bless his ministry in Jesus' name. I also want to appreciate my husband uh, who has given me that privilege and opportunity to be a part of what God is doing in this time. I am grateful. I am grateful to him. I'm grateful to my children. I'm grateful to, to everyone who has been a support in our ministry one way or the other. God bless you. And I hope you're praying for us because sometimes you just think pastors are G's. They always on the top. Yes, we are and we should be. But the truth is there are low moments for us too. So please pray for us. Welcome. 
So tonight I have a task before me to talk about a good mother, a good mother. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise because you are a faithful God. We thank you because without you, we are nothing and we can do nothing. So Lord, tonight we ask in this few minutes that Lord, you bring about an exposition of your word in the name of Jesus, that both the teacher and the hearers now and later on, we will all be blessed together in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Once more, Happy New Year to you. Wherever you're watching from, wherever you're viewing from, at what, whatever time you're listening to this, I say God bless you. So very crucial, um, talking about a good mother. So I began to wonder, I was also given the passage, uh, and I guess you would think about that passage that is so, so like um, on point for this topic. That's Proverbs 31. But beyond that tonight, I know God himself will speak to us. So I, I just went on my knees and I prayed to God that, please make me a good mother. Because if you want to talk about a topic, it's just good and essential that you look through your life first. So I had to pray that any area of my life where I've not been able to live up to expectation, God will help me and open my eyes to see it. Because whenever we teach, don't just think we are talking about you. It also ministers to us. Praise God. So who is a good mother? Proverbs 31. I'll quickly run through that before we begin to discuss uh, those aspects tonight. Proverbs 31. I'll first read verse 1 and 2. I know I'm giving verse 10, but I'll read verse 1 and 2 first, and then I'll jump to verse 10. It says, I'm reading from the Good News Version, verse 1 of Proverbs 31. These are the solemn words which King Lemuel's mother said to him. You are my own dear son. The answer to my prayers. What shall I tell you? That's good news version. Verse 1 and 2. Please take note of that. It was a mother who was giving an advice to a king, he, her own son. So I'm reading now from verse 10. Proverbs 31 from verse 10. It says, how hard it is to find a capable wife. She's worth far more than jewels. Her husband puts his confidence in her, and he will never be poor. As long as she lives, she does him good and never harm. She keeps herself busy, making wool and linen clothes. She brings home food from out of the way places, as merchant ships do. She gets up before daylight to prepare food for her family and to tell her servant women what to do. Verse 16. She looks at land and buys it. And with money she has earned, she plants a vineyard. She is a hard worker, strong and industrious. She knows the value of everything she makes and works late into the night. She spins her own thread and weaves her own clothes. She is generous to the poor and needy. She, do she doesn't worry when it snows because her family has warm clothing. She makes best spreads and wears clothes of fine purple linen. Her husband is well known, one of the leading citizens. Verse 24. She makes clothes and belts and sells them to merchants. She is strong and respected and not afraid of the future. She speaks with a gentle wisdom. She is always busy and looks after her family needs. Her children show their appreciation, and her husband praises her. He says, many women are good wives, but you are the best of them all. Verse 30 and the last verse. Charm is deceitful, and beauty disappears, but a woman who honors the Lord should be praised. Hallelujah. A woman who honors the Lord should be praised. That's where I'm starting my definition from. It is not a woman who carries a baby. That's the first thing I want to establish tonight. Who is a good mother? By the time you begin to hear a mother, the, the general thing that comes to our mind is someone who has gotten a, a, a child, a biological child. But tonight, I want to establish to you that uh, a mother is not just those with babies. 
There are a lot of women who have babies, but they are not mothers. The way they behave, the way they, they react, the way they handle their homes, their family, their children. The touch of motherhood is not there. So I went back to the scriptures, which is our foundation. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, from verse 21 to 23. Genesis chapter 2, from verse 21 to 23. And I'll dwell particularly on verse 23, where God decided to make woman out of a man's rib. Praise the Lord. So that's the first definition, where we come from, refined beings. If you're a refined person in the Lord, you are a good mother. Praise the Lord. God formed man from the dust, but he decided to get a refined being from a man. The Bible said he caused the man to go into a deep sleep, and from his rib, he formed a woman. Woman was not formed out of dust. It's from a refined dust. And how much more when you're saved, when you have a relationship with God. So I want you, my sister, if you're out there and someone has told you that you're barren, say to them from this moment that I'm not barren because I'm refined. I'm regenerated. I'm not just ordinary. Praise the Lord. So you are a refined product. A woman, a mother, is a nation builder. Not just the one that gives birth. That we've seen, you know, that just gives birth to children. We've seen people give birth to 10 children, and they, they can't really hold on to one out of them. Praise God. But we're talking about a mother of nations. In Genesis 17, verse 16. Sarah, Sarah's name was Sarah before God decided to change the name, when he also changed the name of Abraham to Abraham. So immediately, God decided that Abraham was going to become Abraham, the father of many nations. Sarah's name also changed to Sarah, the mother of nations. He said, As she will bear nations. Praise God. She is known as a princess, a, a, a good mother. Praise the Lord. So it is not necessarily those who have biological children that are mothers. There are a lot of mothers in the Bible, and tonight we'll be dwelling on a particular mother. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Let me continue to uh, give us a bit of exposition on who a good mother is, a good mother. Proverbs 18, 22 tells me that whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing. I know the world thing could put us off, but the truth is you're not just a thing as a good mother. You carry grace. You are good if you're good. You carry a value. You carry a virtue. You are a good mother. And if you followed me through with that Proverbs 31 from verse 10, actually from that verse 1 and 2, you will see where the definition of a good mother starts, where a mother decided to say to the king, a whole king, some mothers would have said, because this man is a king, I can't, I can't talk to him anymore. He is a man of authority. I do not have the power to say anything to him. But the woman who we're talking about this night understood that even though my son is a king and the whole uh, nation respects him, he is still my son. He needs to know certain things that will keep him on that throne. And so he, she began to tell him, if you want to live like a king, if you want the glory that comes with a king, don't give yourself to too much wine. Do not mock yourself before people. So a good mother is a good counselor. Praise the Lord. Is the one that counsels out of sincerity. Is the one that can look people in the face and tell them nothing but the truth. 
Praise the Lord. The Bible tells me in verse 10 of that Proverbs 31 that her price is far beyond rubies. And I try to look into the value of rubies. You know, it, 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 rubies, rubies are so precious that they are likened to health. They are likened to wealth. They are likened to wisdom. They are likened to success. So this is a good woman. So in other words, when you are talking about a good mother, you are talking about health. Someone who makes sure that the environment is clean at home. So people are healthy. The first nurse and the first doctor that you will encounter. The first one who knows what your babbling means. When a good mother picks a child and hears them babbling, she can interpret when a child is going, blah, 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 blah. So, oh, she needs water. How did you understand that babbling? Because there's an inner ear. That is a good mother that can read beyond the physical signs. She is a wealth. That's why the Bible says if you find a wife, a good wife, you find a good thing. She represents wealth. Like this woman that we're describing in Proverbs 31. He said she wakes up in the morning so early. She does not even sleep as it were with the description. Her hands are always working, bringing wealth, a good mother. So this year, I'm encouraging a mother out there. It is not only when you walk back to back that you're going to get wealth. Do you know that the little time you spend with your children are some of the greatest wealth you can ever make in life? Because when those children get that connection, when they see love, when you're able to pick those areas of their lives that needs correction early in time, that is your wealth when you're growing older. Because there will be a time like the king that you might feel you, you are not able to talk to your children anymore. A lot of children are out there on the street because there's been a disconnection between them and their mothers. The Bible finalizes that passage, you know, at the end, that her children would rise up to bless her. In 2023, I'm encouraging you, let your children, let them wake up to bless you. Don't let them wake up to say, oh, mommy, she's gone again. We know she's never there. They might not be bold to say it to your face. The Proverbs 31 woman we're talking about is the one that is so industrious and yet available. Please be available. We are talking about a good mother here. The Bible talks about this woman in verse 11 of Proverbs 31. Said she brings about confidence. She brings about confidence into the life of her husband. Oh, thank God for developed world where it seems like women are more empowered. If God grants you the grace as a mother to be at that pinnacle of your career, of your success, of your wealth, how does that rub off on your husband? How does that rub off on your children? The Bible says that her husband sits at the city gates. What happens at the city gate? City gates are where crucial decisions are made. You're a well-known mother. You're a well-respected mother out there. And your husband is trampled upon. Then I'm really sorry. You have not done well. These are hard teaching. But as we start the year, I'm encouraging someone to look through their lives and ask questions. Am I... That woman that builds my husband's confidence. Am I that woman that my children are really proud to be associated with? Can they talk about me among their friends, among their uh, colleagues, and say, oh, my mom, my mom, with confidence? We're talking about a good mother here. The Bible says in verse 12, she's harmless. Good mother does not create an environment 
where there's always danger, where there's always strife, where there's always quarrel, where there's always misunderstanding. When you are home, does your husband feel at peace? Or does your husband want to go out whilst you're coming in? Because he knows that as soon as you're coming in, there's one thing or the other that needs to start happening. And that's not a palatable thing. When you are home, are your children happy that you're there? Is it quiet and peaceful? The Bible says she's harmless. She does not harm her family. She looks for the good of her family. If you're just joining or you're just listening, we're talking about who is a good mother. And our text tonight is taken from Proverbs chapter 31. I've read verses 1 and 2, and I've also read verses 10 to the end. We have established the fact that a good mother is not just the one that has gotten a child from their own bosom. There are many people with their biological children that they know that their children would not ever want to call them mom for the experiences. This afternoon, I stumbled on a video that I shared with my brother that a three-year-old child is practically running away from her own mother. What a nasty experience that child would have had. For that child boldly to say, no, I don't want to be associated with you. We're talking about a good mother here. She is a merchant of good things. Who is a merchant? Is a trader. A lot of us are chasing nine to 12 job. We're chasing 12 hours shift. We're chasing 24 hours shift. Do you know what? I was reading from a consultant tonight about NHS and he was, you know, giving us the narration of what is going on in, in NHS, that a lot of doctors are going on to uh, working as locums. Why? Because the job is overwhelming for them. And that's why you call A and E and you're staying there for hours. And then there's a lot of money being spent on uh, um, agency staff because now most of them go back to agency. Now, it is most of our mothers that then go to take this shift. We're not saying you should not work. The Bible says if you don't work, you are not allowed to eat because it's unfair for others to be working and for you not to work. But look at this woman. She was able to strike the balance. She had food for her family. She had clothing for her family. She had time for her family. She had time so much that her children could relate with her. Her husband finds joy in her as busy as she was. How busy could you be? Could you be as busy as this woman? We're talking about a good mother here. As I begin to round off tonight, I'm looking at my time. I've got six more minutes. She is, she is not a deep sleeper, I put here in verse 15. Oh, some of us, we are so good with movies, we get indulged, you know, in certain hobbies that even when our children are crying, we are not aware. I was reading about a teenage woman who was jailed for, I think, 20 months for leaving, no, for two years for leaving her, her 20, uh, her 20 month old baby at home because she went to celebrate her birthday and the baby starved to death. We're talking about a good mother here. She went to celebrate her own 18th birthday, locked the baby in the room, and the baby starved to death. So you see where the uh, correlation comes in that it is not just about those who have children. Praise the Lord. She's not a deep sleeper. Remember that story in the Bible where those two harlots once slept so much that she slept, you know, and killed her own baby. And the other one also slept so much that her baby was taken away and she never knew until she woke up. Please do not sleep the sleep of death. And it's not just the sleeping, closing your eyes that we're talking about. It's also about spiritual sleeping. There are a lot of mothers who are sleeping spiritually. You're not sensitive. You're not seeing what is going on. Your children are trying to relate a story to you. They're trying to let you know what is going on in their life. They want to share their experiences. They even sometimes want to share their dreams. 
but you're not there. A good mother will pick those signs that your child is walking in and out in, in the room. You sense that they want to talk to you, but when you're tired, you're overworked. You really want to chase them out of your room. We're talking about a good mother here. Thank God for Mary, and thank God for one of the Christmas carols. He said, Mary, did you know that one day your little boy Jesus will be this known all over the world? Mothers, moms out there, do you know that the children God has given to you, whether biological or spiritual, or even your foster children, that they are given to you for a purpose, to leave a mark in their lives that they will remember for good. This woman wasn't a deep sleeper. She was an investor. She was a producer. The wool, ordinary wools that you would have trampled on. She makes clothing for herself and for her family out of it. Anything her hands touches, she turns it around to money. And the Bible says she makes fine linen of purple. Go and read about purple. Those who wear purple stay in the palace. So she's not just making robes for anyone. Imagine... Uh, I, I was I, w I went to um, uh, Dagenham Museum the other day, and I found out that the robe that the queen wears, a woman from Dagenham sews it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? It's, I, I can imagine where she started from, her sewing machine. The history of queen and whatever she wears, it will be linked to this family forever. So I cap it up this night to say that her husband, is well respected. Now, you might be out there as a single mom, not married, and you're saying to me, I got no business with a husband. It's not my business. That does No, it concerns you. If you've got a male figure, your brother, when you are well placed, your brothers will be respected. Your sons will be respected. When you live well, especially your presentation in the public, the male figures in your life, your cousins, your nephews, they are men. When you're a good mother, it rubs off on them. Can they look you in the face and call you auntie? Can they call you sister? Can, that, 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 can they see a motherly figure in you? We're talking about a good mother tonight. Do you build confidence into them? Do you give them that boldness to be able to stand and withstand any challenge in life? A good mother is wise and very sensitive. Picks the little sign when things are about to go wrong. And as I round off tonight, in the new year, you can't do any of this without God. All of the things I've mentioned tonight, if you do not have God in your life, you might be very intelligent. Someone has said, a, you know, an educated person, a clever person without Christ is a clever devil. You just be smart. You'll be smart to do things, but you end up knowing that everything you're doing amounts to nothing because the maker and giver of them all is the Lord. So if you've not given your life to Christ, you'll be struggling with these things I'm talking about. I invite you on the altar tonight that your life is crucial to your maker, just as you're starting the year, I invite you to give your life to Christ. It's a simple step. You don't need a prophet. You don't need a general overseer, wherever you are. You're tired of seeing what you're seeing in the life of your husband, your, the life of your cousin, your nephew. You don't like it, your son. You feel, no, this is not the life I want them to live. Tonight, I want you first to run to the Lord and say, here am I. Send me, here am I, send me, when the Lord needs somebody, here am I, send me. Bow your head and just say, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. I ask for mercies upon my life tonight, wherever I have not lived up to expectation as a good mother. I pray that you forgive me. I ask, O oh God, that you come into my life and you enable me and empower me to become a mother that you created me to be. 
to be a mother to nations. In the mighty name of Jesus, come into my life and live in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving all my sins and thank you for bringing me back home so that through me, many nations will be built. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am born again. Thank you, Savior, in Jesus' mighty name. So, Lord, I pray for your people. As many as have said this prayer with me in their heart of hearts, I declare the peace of God upon you because there's no more condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. I pray for your deliverance and your salvation tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say go in the strength of the Lord and begin to manifest as a godly mother in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please find a living church to worship. That is the way you grow your faith. No one is able to sustain this without fellowshipping with other brethren. Wherever the word of God is preached with power, with life, please go there and worship. And per adventure, you don't have a place of worship or you feel, you know, you've been battered. We know many people have been battered. Many people are fighting with God. Many people are not happy with the church. Please, one more time, allow God, give him a chance. Give him a chance. Join us to fellowship at RCCG, Life Changers Assembly. We are located at Royals uh, Building, opposite 24 Hours Tesco. Our meeting times are 10 a.m. every Sunday, 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. And by the grace of God, every Friday, we do similar things like this to share the word of God. You don't have to be seen. You can hide your ID if you feel you don't want no one to know you. What is important to us is that you hear the word of God and you grow to be a good mother that the Lord has created you for and the world is waiting for. So I pray for you this year that you'll be a good mother. God bless you for taking time to listen. Amen. So I rise, rise and shine. of the love of God, where you're being nurtured according to the will of God, where light shines upon your life and your life will never remain the same again.